shortly after, Dominic and Martina were sitting at the dining room table together as if things had never changed. Partway through the meal, Dominic received a call from his mother, Laura. He put her on speakerphone, not hiding the call from Martina. Why didn't you tell me you'd moved? Laura asked. I had to. This place is more convenient, he explained as he looked at Martina. Martina glanced away. Your father is about to turn 60. You need to make the time to come back for his birthday party, Laura scolded. We'll talk about it more when it gets closer, he replied vaguely before hanging up. A few seconds later, Martina's phone began ringing. She froze and swallowed her dread when she saw the caller. Mrs. Suarez, Martina greeted politely as she answered. Dominic's mother had always insisted that Martina address her in this way. Laura didn't bother wasting time on niceties. Dominic's father is turning 60. I want you to come to the party, she said, before abruptly hanging up. Martina rolled her eyes and started eating again. But instead of eating, Dominic was analyzing her expression. Are you angry? He asked. Not at you, she replied. He looked at her for a moment as he thought. Then he pushed a bowl towards her. I made all your favorites, he said. She wanted to tell him there was no point in trying so hard. Their relationship would never go anywhere. But he looked so happy that she couldn't bear to ruin the mood of the person she cared about the most. She wasn't trying to be pessimistic or afraid of committing to him. But she knew their odds. All she could think about was how hurt he would be when they ultimately failed. After eating lunch in the nearest town, Eric and Emma finally arrived at the remote estate where Bertram lived. A young woman answered the door. Does Bertrand Schumann live here? Emma asked. The young woman looked cautiously at them. I'm his daughter, Sarah. Who are you? Emma quickly began explaining who she was and why they were there. Sarah's frown became more prominent with every word. It wasn't easy for my father to let go of his obsession and start acting like himself again. Dealing with the film industry isn't good for him. Please leave, Sarah said. Emma placed a hand on the door, hoping to discourage the other woman from slamming it in their faces. I know I'm digging up a sad past, but your father tried to make this film happen for decades. I can make that happen, 
shouldn't he be the one to choose if he wants to give that up now? The young woman looked between Emma and Eric for a moment. Emma held out her business card. Just think about it. The woman accepted the business card, only to toss it in the small hallway trash can. She looked back at Emma. I don't trust people from the entertainment industry. Please leave and don't come back. Then she shut the door. The wind made Emma shiver, but she wasn't too worried. She had prepared herself for a reaction like this. Eric wrapped an arm around her and kissed the side of her head. Let's go wait at the hotel. It's cold out here, he said. I want to wait a bit longer, she replied. I want him and his family to know that I'm serious. He nodded and waited next to her. Eventually, the sun started setting, giving the wind a more bitter edge. We should get into the car. It's getting uncomfortable, he said. She knew he was right. Just as she was about to concede and head to the car, the door opened. Bertram's daughter looked at them with a reluctant expression. My father wants to invite you two in. They eagerly followed her into the house. Good evening, Mr. Shulman, Emma said politely as they entered the living room. Sweetheart, you can call me Bert, he said with a smile and a wink. He looked at Eric. So Kaleidoscope's infamous CEO wants to see me? Eric cleared his throat and frowned. Actually, Bert, he said, I'm not here on behalf of Kaleidoscope. This is my wife, Emma Miller. The smile dropped from Bertram's face as he took a perfunctory glance at Emma. Are you telling me that your wife is the one who wants me to make a comeback? He asked. Emma stepped forward. I know that you have a dream to create a blockbuster sci-fi film. A film that everyone will remember. With you? Bertram asked, looking at her with doubt. You want to invest in my film? Actually... I want to participate in its production, Emma replied. That might be a bit much for you, don't you think? Bertram asked. I can see that you think I'm just a bored housewife with a lot of money, but I'm a professional. Maybe you would realize that if you sat down and watched my movies, Emma replied coolly. However, if you continue to speak to me with that attitude, I don't think we'll be able to work together. She pulled out a sticky note from her purse and wrote down the movies in which she had appeared. 
She ripped off the paper and set it on a coffee table. I'll be staying at the hotel in town while I await your response, she said before turning around and leaving with Eric. Eric had been angry at how the man had spoken to his wife, but he didn't react. He took her to the hotel without bringing it up to her. This was Emma's business meeting, so he would defer to her. Bertram stared at the door for a while before finally wandering out of the room. He ignored the piece of paper Emma had left behind. Filled with curiosity over the encounter, Sarah picked it up and decided to look up the movies online. The first film that caught her eye was Weird Husband because she enjoyed apocalypse movies. Although she hadn't expected to be impressed, she found herself absorbed in the movie after only a few minutes. Eventually, Bertram returned and lingered behind the couch. He watched the movie over his daughter's shoulder for a while. What's this? He asked. Weird husband. Emma, the woman who was here earlier, stars in it. Her acting is really good. She replied distractedly. He shuffled over and sat next to his daughter on the couch. They watched the rest of the nearly two-hour-long movie in silence. Finally, when the credits started rolling, his daughter sighed with satisfaction. I can't remember the last time I saw a new actor that good. Don't you agree? She asked. Instead of responding, he just shrugged. Discomfort over the way he had underestimated Emma began creeping up on him. Should I put on another one of her movies? Sarah suggested. He nodded and continued thinking while he waited. A spark of passion for film, which had been suppressed for a long time, returned to his heart. He wanted to work with somebody who would be committed to making his movie a success. He was confident in his script, but he had never found an investor or producer that he felt was as serious as him. He realized as he compared the actor on screen with the woman he had met that her reputation depended on the movie even more than his. Bertram and Sarah spent the rest of the night watching Emma's movies. Whether or not he wanted to be, he was moved by Emma's acting. When they finally finished, Sarah turned to her father and asked, What do you think? Help me contact her, he replied. Good thing I grabbed this out of the trash after the second movie, she said, pulling the crumpled business card from her pocket. I knew you would change your mind. Although he knew Emma was probably still waiting for his response, 
he couldn't bring himself to call until the following morning. Because of the large number of people expressing interest in superstar media, Lisa and Martina had gathered the details of a few artists they thought Emma might be interested in. But since she would be occupied with filming the sci-fi movie, it was unlikely they would sign another artist anytime soon. During the two days that Emma was gone, apart from checking on Diana's travels, Martina spent all her time at home resting. Dominic attended some events, but he mostly stayed home to keep her company, even though she ignored him. Meanwhile, his father's 60th birthday party rapidly approached. Martina hadn't given any indication about whether she was planning to attend as far as he could tell, she had no interest in seeing his parents ever again. On the third morning, Emma returned to Superstar Media with Bertram and good news. Martina went to the office, curious to meet the man who was so persistent about filming a blockbuster sci-fi film. Bertrand and Emma had been getting along well since returning to New York City. They were both prepared for the years of commitment producing the movie would take. Emma had taken out all of her savings to invest in the production. Then, she requested that Bertram find a production team that he trusted because she wanted to make sure the film was worth the money. He admired her confidence in his script and skill. He felt more than prepared to prove her right. When the meeting was over and she appreciated Emma's concern for her, but she wasn't the same Martina that Laura had stomped all over for years. She wouldn't be that person ever again. The following day, Dominic was dressed in formal attire and ready to go when he noticed Martina hadn't made any moves to get ready. You're not going, he asked. You go first. I have a few things I have to finish up first, she replied from behind her laptop. You're not coming with me, he asked. Do I need to go with you? She replied. Although he wanted to insist that she stand by his side, the fact that she was willing to go at all was a huge compromise. He closed her door and called Trevor to bring the car around. When Trevor saw him alone... He asked, Is Martina not going? Dominic shrugged. She needs some more time. He wistfully glanced back up toward the apartment one last time before leaving. As soon as she was sure Dominic had left, Martina closed her laptop and walked over to the closet to get ready. In celebration of Augustin Suarez's 60th birthday, the family home had been extravagantly decorated. 
he and Laura had invited every socialite family with a single daughter to the party, trying to find someone suitable for Dominic. They were hoping that if he settled down, he would withdraw from the entertainment industry. Augustin had always thought Dominic should have pursued a more respectable career than acting. As Augustin and Laura chatted with guests, Dominic stole the attention of the women in the room when he arrived in his black suit. Laura was pleased with their response hoping it meant that her plan would work. When he approached her, she placed a hand gently on t- Go keep Patricia's daughter company. This time, Dominic followed her instructions without arguing. Victoria was a pretty young woman, and she didn't mind that he didn't seem interested in her yet. She was more interested in the chase and the potential victory of taming the bad boy. She kept trying to engage him in conversation, but he responded with one-word answers. He barely looked at her. Instead, searching the room for something. Dom, it doesn't seem like you're having a good time, she said in a teasing voice, resting a hand on his arm. He frowned and shook her hand off. I'm not, he replied flatly. Oh, She took a step back and evaluated his expression. She decided to try a new tactic. Hey, I heard you have a sister. Where is she? She asked. To her surprise, he gave her his full attention for a moment. Adoptive sister, he corrected. But that's none of your business, he said, before walking away. She looked at the other people standing around them, in confusion. The Suarez family only has one son. They adopted Martina, but apparently no one in the family likes her. Last I heard... She's just an assistant to some celebrity, an older woman explained. Victoria looked at Dominic's retreating figure with suspicion. What about Dominic? What does he think about her? Another woman chimed in. I don't think he likes her either. After all, who wants someone to intrude on their family like that? Victoria sighed with relief as her potential relationship with Dominic became a possibility again. The official start time for the celebration was rapidly approaching, but Laura still hadn't seen Martina. Her smile dropped quickly as a white sports car pulled up in front of the house. Martina stepped out of the car, dressed in a floor-length sparkling silver gown. Whispers instantly broke out across the crowd as people noticed her. Isn't she the one that the Suarez family adopted? Martina is all grown up now, 
She looks beautiful, a family friend exclaimed. Attention was torn between the car she had arrived in and the designer dress she was wearing. Martina ignored the whispers and confidently strode toward Augustin and Laura, her white heels clicking against the tile. Mom! Dad! She exclaimed, throwing her arms around them. Augustin appreciated her presence, although he didn't reciprocate her enthusiasm. Laura, on the other hand, flinched at the terms of endearment. Before she could hand Augustin his present, Dominic pulled her into his arms. He lingered and held her against his chest. It's so good to see you, he said, loud enough for others to hear. She resisted the urge to stomp on his foot in front of the crowd. They lived together. He was clearly putting on a show for others. Everyone who had assumed that Dominic disliked Martina looked at each other in surprise. It was a sharp contrast to the cold indifference he had shown the rest of the young women in the room. Laura was silently fuming at Dominic's attention, but she couldn't make a scene in front of everyone. Dom, help me entertain the guests, she reminded him. Martina pinched him for his behavior, causing him to laugh loudly. Before long, it was time to open gifts. Each family had outrageously expensive gifts for the host, trying to outdo each other. was this old item. She calmly ignored Laura's glare. She was furious that Martina had upstaged Victoria's gift. The expressions of the guests nearest to them softened at the sweet moment. Only a bitter person wouldn't have been impressed by the amount of effort she had put in. Nonetheless, some people were still determined to try and make Martina look bad. I hear you work as a manager in the entertainment industry. Aren't entertainers difficult to get along with? A woman asked. She wanted to make it seem 
like Martina spend her day babysitting divas and clowns. Martina smiled. They're not any more difficult to get along with than you are, she said. The woman's jaw dropped in shock, while the rest of the crowd processed her words. Pardon me, I need to use the restroom. Please, continue without me, Martina said. She knew she needed to leave before people caught up to her remark and attacked her. However, just as she reached the second floor bathroom, a large figure pushed her inside and locked the door behind them. Are you crazy? She snapped at the sight of Dominic. He grabbed her wrist and pressed his lips tightly against her. For you? Yes. She sighed and bit his lower lip before pulling away. Do you want the whole world to know what we're up to? She asked. He shrugged. As long as I'm happy... I don't care about what other people think. What about my happiness? I care about what other people think, she replied. He sighed and nodded. Can I hug you for a little bit? After that, I promise to behave, he said. Fine. But you better behave, she said with a mock sternness that melted away as soon as she was in his arms. After a few moments, he let go. We should continue at home tonight, he whispered before leaving. She faced the mirror and began touching up her makeup. Before she could finish, Victoria barged into the bathroom. Were you and Dominic in here together? Victoria asked. Martina stared blankly at Victoria. I don't know what you're talking about, Martina said calmly. But... I just saw him come out of here, Victoria insisted. You must be mistaken, Martina said. Victoria shook her head and left the bathroom. I know she's technically his sister, but I swore I just saw Dominic leave that bathroom wiping a lipstick off his mouth she thought. The pieces were right in front of her, but she struggled to put them together. After going through the possibilities, the only reasonable conclusion she could come up with was that Martina had somehow seduced Dominic. They're not blood relatives, so it's not impossible, Victoria thought. She wondered whether she should tell Laura about what she had seen. As much as she wanted Martina exposed for being disgusting, disrupting the celebration could blow up in her face. She decided to confront Dominic first. She walked up to him. I could have sworn I just saw you in the bathroom with Martina just now. Am I mistaken? She asked. No, you saw me. He admitted without hesitation. What? She gasped as she stared at him in shock.
didn't you hear me? Dominic said with a look of pity. Are you saying that you and Martina were being intimate in the bathroom? Victoria asked in shock. It doesn't matter what we were doing, he replied. It has nothing to do with you. He picked up his wine glass and walked away. He hadn't admitted to anything, but he also hadn't denied it. Victoria clenched her fists. She felt so helpless when it came to Dominic and his mind games. She was generally an understanding person who had no problem admitting defeat. But this was about Martina, and she couldn't stand the thought of being bested by her especially since Dominic and Martina were siblings. As this last thought lingered in her head, she walked over to Laura. Excuse me, she said, gently interrupting Laura's conversation. Could I speak to you for a moment in private? Laura nodded and followed her out of the room and into the garden. What did you need to speak with me about? Laura asked, once they were out of earshot of the rest of the party. Victoria hesitated for a moment, before getting straight to the point. Don't you feel that Dominic and Martina's relationship is just a little too close? She asked. Well, they're siblings, replied Laura. It's natural for them to be close. Why do you ask? Just a moment ago, Victoria said, I saw them kissing in the bathroom. I confronted Dominic about it after, and he didn't even try to deny it. Laura looked at her in shock, her eyes growing wide. Are you sure that's what you saw? She asked. When Dominic left the bathroom, he was even wiping lipstick off his lips. Victoria replied. Laura could feel her jaw tighten in anger. She stormed back into the house, past all the guests at her important event, and right up to Martina. I didn't raise you so you could grow up to seduce your brother, she yelled, drawing everyone's attention. Martina didn't respond. She waited for Dominic to come to her side. I'm sorry to disappoint you, she finally replied. But I didn't seduce your son. He's the one who's been trying to seduce me. How dare you? Laura growled. Our family raised you. But you also tried to sell me off. Martina shot back. Whatever gratitude I felt when you took me into your home evaporated the moment you tried to sell me off to the highest bidder. Laura glared at her. Besides, Martina continued, Dominic and I aren't blood relatives. Even if I wanted to be with him, there's nothing wrong with that. So, 
if you so badly want to believe that I seduced your son, I'll give you what you want. She turned to Dominic and pulled him into a kiss. Then she let go and turned back to Laura. Just as you wished, she said. You, you little. Laura struggled to get the words out through her anger. Martina smirked back at her and pushed Dominic aside. Whatever gratitude I had for your family ends today, she said. And then she looked at Dominic. And it's time for you to get out of my house. Move, or I'm moving. As all the guests watched, Martina marched out. Laura was so angry, she could feel her heart pounding. But she knew there was nothing she could do. You had better explain everything to me, she said to Dominic in a threatening tone. Martina already said everything that needed to be said, he replied, shrugging. Do you really want me to confirm your fears? Just tell me, she yelled. She's right. I'm the one who's been trying to get her to be with me, he admitted. I've been chasing her all around the world. I got into acting to get closer to her. I even moved in next door to her. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Laura said, shocked and appalled. She's your sister. In name only, he said. Dominic put down his wine glass and turned to all the guests who seemed to be frozen in their spots. I'm sorry, he said in a loud voice so they could all hear. I hope you'll all excuse me. I have to go after Martina now. Please continue to enjoy the party. With that, he rushed out the door to find her. He realized he had a lot to thank Victoria for. If she hadn't exposed his secret out of jealousy, he would have never known that Martina had toughened up so much. The way she stood up to his mother had been inspiring. Clearly, she had learned to protect herself. After Laura's public scolding, Dominic felt a sense of relief. Since it had happened in front of so many people, he knew his secret was finally out. He also knew that the way forward would be you wouldn't understand. You're right, Lucy said. I wouldn't. But you two have been such a big part of each other's lives for so long. If you were to cut him out, would you regret it? How do you even feel about him, honestly? Martina stayed quiet. Love is always difficult, no matter who you're with, Lucy continued. She took Martina's hand and gave it a gentle squeeze. I have to practice early tomorrow morning, 
so I won't be able to stay up with you, she said, her voice compassionate. You're welcome to stay here for the night, but I think any more than that would be a bad idea. Martina stayed silent, but Lucy could see a hint of relief in her eyes. As they both stepped into the apartment, Martina got a text from Dominic telling her to come home. She frowned and put her phone back in her purse. She wasn't going to forget about this night's events anytime soon. A few moments later, her phone rang. Hey... Emma said. I heard the party got pretty exciting. What are you talking about? Martina asked, feeling anxious. Did you forget what industry you work in? Emma said. It's all over the news. You and Dominic are apparently an item. Or at least, that's what the rumors say. How are you planning on dealing with this? Just say the word, and I'll get it all arranged. 